welcome to Hot Weekly. Hello, everyone. I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly Live! Haunt Weekly Live! <laughs> oh my god, oh my god! Unless you're listening to the recorded record podcast. <laughs> but it's recorded live! It which is! Which I guess technically all podcasts are recorded live when you think about it. Yeah. But anyways, yes indeed, Haunt <laughs> Weekly is back with a live show. And this week, we have a pair of very special guests we'll get into in just one second. Because uh, we got to make sure that you know we have a brand new website at HauntWeekly.com. We'll be talking more about that next week. Uh, mm-hmm. Brand new website, HauntWeekly.com. Check us out there. We're Haunt Weekly on Facebook, <clears throat> Haunt Weekly on Twitter, and YouTube.com slash Haunt Weekly is the YouTube channel. You can also subscribe to us, all the usual suspects, um, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, Stitcher. I, I don't know. There's a ton of them. I don't know all of them. But anyways... Yes, after 31 or so episodes of not mm-hmm. doing a live recording, we're back in the studio, which is still missing some of its lights, yes. but we'll figure that out as time goes on. But regardless, we have two very special guests here to talk to us today about travel cue acting, mm-hmm. something I am very, very excited about learning more about. So coming at us this week, it is Katie Lane. And some guy I've never heard of before, uh, Jops, <laughs> Pales, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just, writing, the yeah, I'm just writing Katie's to- coattails. That's, uh, <laughs> she's dragging me along. <laughs> hey, you know, you can be on worse coattails. I'll say that much for you. No, <laughs> James and Katie, how are you doing? Thank you for hey, joining how us. Are you? All right, yeah. yeah. This is exciting because this is something I literally know absolutely nothing about. So I get to shut up and let the experts talk. That's pretty much my my plan here. So we'll kick things off in just a second. But, yeah, uh, real fast, uh, before we dive into it, where can people find you, just in case they don't listen all the way to the end? Get get, get some plugs in now. Katie, go for it. Yeah. Um, So I... My website is currently down. That's in process of getting relaunched and stuff. Uh, my haunt name and business name, it's Bansheette. So B-A-N-S-H-E-E-T-T-E. So it's Little Banshee. Um, I've currently got a new logo being designed. So everything's just kind of in process. Nothing's live right now. But I'm on Facebook, pretty much anything social media. If you type in Bansheette, you will find me. Um, and same with like my email is Bansheette at gmail.com. So I'm pretty accessible. All right. Be sure to spell that one more time for the people in the back. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so it's B-A-N-S-H-E-E-T-T-E. Yep. So it's like little banshee. Yep. Banshee X. Awesome. And Japes, uh, for purpose of time, please list the places you are not. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually not a lot of places anymore. Uh, Facebook is my my main home, my main base of of operations, I guess. But you can you can reach me at Lost Soul Chicago uh, at gmail dot com. You can also find our our Facebook page at Lost Soul Chicago. Um, so that's that's kind of the best way to get in touch with me. Sounds great to me. All right, uh, Crystal, why don't you lead us off? Okay. Well, okay. First- go, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. First, I want to do a little bit more introduction. Um, Katie, mm-hmm. Japes has been on there on our podcast before several times, but Katie, you're new to the show. Um, can you give us a little bit about how you got into the haunt industry and how long you've been doing it? So I was the kid that was always obsessed with Halloween. Like I would plan my costume a year in advance. Pretty much once trick-or-treating was done, I was already planning what I was going to do next year. <laughs> And when I was nine years old, I was asked by our neighbor, who was the head of a Boy Scout troop, to help with their little charity haunt. It was just a weekend, throw up, like, a lot of, like, cardboard walls, black plastic, basically a step below a JC's. Uh And I was the token girl asked because I was the weird girl. And I also did gymnastics. They had me doing, like, spider crawls and doing, like, weird contortions and stuff. And so that's where I fell in love with it. And then I've been doing it nonstop for 22, 23 years since. Well, that's great. Wow, 20. 
it, it's, it's still wild to think that it's possible for people our age to have 23 years experience in this field, but it's absolutely possible <laughs> and even easy. It's just, it, it, uh, no, it, I refuse to accept that I am this age is what yeah. I'm trying to say. Well, <laughs> oh, I, I've hit the point where like I ha I've trained actors that like, weren't born until after I was already working in pro level haunts. And then it's yeah. just like, Oh, Oh, I have been doing yeah, that's this. That's like when we get, you know, yeah. young parents who come to our haunt and say, your haunt was my first haunt. Now I'm bringing little Jimmy through. And it's like, no, please keep that to yourself. That information is not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and Japes, if you do want to give a short background just for the people who are new, um, well, it's been 31 weeks. So <laughs> it's been absolutely. longer than that since we've had yeah, Japes. I know. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, Japes Palace. Uh, I've been haunting. This is this will be my twenty first season. Um, trained and managed actors in most uh, in some of the biggest haunts in Chicagoland. I've guest acted at pretty much every haunt in Chicagoland. I am the owner operator of Lost Souls uh, Haunted House Bus Tours, and I also am now the performance director for Midnight Terror. So um, nice, staying very. Yeah. Very busy. And if anyone has any questions about the Lost Souls bus tour, I will stand for it so hard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I cannot always, recommend enough. No, not best haunt trip ever, just because I had to do no planning or thinking at all. It was just great. <laughs> yeah. James was in charge of the thinking. Yeah. So now yeah, for the, the first... only thing, the only thinking you had to do is what kind of beer you wanted to drink. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? That is the kind of thinking I enjoy doing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good at that thinking. Um, so for the first question that we actually have written down, <laughs> um, definition of a traveling actor, what, what is a traveling Q line actor, a traveling actor to you? Um, do you want me to go first, James, or? Well, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I'm coming. Yes, go for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so to me, a traveling actor or guest actor is when a haunt brings in a performer that is not predominantly or primarily at their show to come in and perform usually on a short term basis, like a weekend or so. Okay. And I'm, and I'm thinking I'm going more broad here. So um, I guess, you know, there, there's a lot of haunts that kind of keep things within their four walls. Right. And they want, they don't talk to the actors about other haunts. And to me, um, guest acting and going and working at other haunts uh, is not cheating, right? I think there's, there's, there, there's like a common uh, fear in the haunt industry that if you let your actors go and work other places, they're, they're going to leave you, you know? Um, and I think that says more about you than it does about them. If, if, they, if, if somebody guest acts in another haunt and they leave your haunt, maybe there's a, a problem with your haunt. Um, so, you know, guest acting, I think, is a, is a great exercise. Um, for everyone to try and check out different shows, learn how different shows work and work on being more dynamic. Um, so I don't look, it can be, and I think both, both Katie and I can, can talk about like sort of getting started with guest acting all the way up to like, you know, the professional level where you're now being hired and being brought in by outside or, you know, by companies um, to, to do, to do work for them. So um so I'm definitely looking at it very broadly in, in, in the idea of guest acting is literally working for another haunt that you don't, isn't your main haunt. Um, so, yeah. Um, and I like this. You mentioned the idea of it being a short term thing, usually a weekend, a night, you know, whatever is available. And that is something that I think a lot of people uh, might be interested in because one of the things I hear all the time from actors is, "Hey, I'd really love to be an actor in a haunted house, but you know, I can only do so many nights. You know, I've got other jobs. This might be an opportunity for some actors that, like I said, have very busy lives to take a night or two here, a night or two there over the course of the season, but not burn themselves out by working the full twenty six nights. Mm -hmm. So that's an idea." Okay. Yeah, there's there's I mean now it's much more common to have a lot of different yeah. you know off season events, right? So if, yeah. if if Midnight Terror isn't open for Valentine's Day, then hey, let's go to the haunt let's go work for the haunts. You know, like you, yeah. you you can approach it one of two ways, I think. You can either go and visit the haunts that are open on, on Valentine's Day, or you can go and work for them. But like 
again, I work for Midnight Terror. If I go there, that doesn't mean now I work for them. I worked one night. I went and experienced their show. So, um, you know, so I, I think off-season events or, or those, um, you know. Uh, yeah, and th- I, those I, night, the nights when your haunt isn't open. You know, mm-hmm. we, we have. And I, I will add. I think it's a great idea to visit a haunt and go through a haunt as a customer before you decide to work there, whether as a guest actor or as a regular actor, just because you need to know what it's about. Mm-hmm. And the best way to get a handle on that quick is to go through the haunt. Mm-hmm. So, so here's the thing. Other than you know me discussing my laziness and exhaustion, um, why would you want to guest act? Why sh- why would one want, want to do it? Why would I want a guest act as yeah. opposed to just working at one show? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so in my career, I have at various times managed three separate haunts. And so I like to do a balance of I do a few years of managing a show and being that control freak that oversees every single aspect, training the actors. Literally, when I manage a show, I deal with everything from what's going on in the parking lot to what's going on to the haunt, to what's going on to my bars, and what is going on with all of my customers. Like, I very much like having a t- finger on everything. And so I like in between those periods when I'm not running a show to then just kind of have fun and see how other shows operate because I, I love learning how other shows run because I don't know everything. And every time I visit a show, I learn at least something as to like, oh, I would I love how they do this process or, ooh, this doesn't quite work, so maybe think around another solution. You know, there's always knowledge to be gained. And for me, it helps avoid burnout because, again, I go from – being so in charge of everything to, you know, having a walkie attached to my head to having my phone go off until 2.33 in the morning because, you know, when you manage a show, you also are the babysitter for an entire cast and crew of overdramatic actors who don't understand bedtimes. Uh, <laughs> so for me, when I guest act, it's great. Like, I pull up. Like, I get to see my friends that I normally only see at, like, Transworld or Midwest. I get to just act maybe do a little bit of actor training with some of their staff, but that's it. At the end of the night, it's not my problem who broke up with Tommy or you know, <laughs> who's feeling depressed and sad and needs to talk for three hours on the phone. That's not my problem. Yeah. That you night. didn't get I invited to the Denny's afterward. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. And I, I, I mean, you know, Especially, yeah, I think that the point when you're when you're in management, you have to deal with so much extra stuff, and a lot of times you can't just play. And and that's, for me, one of my favorite parts is just not having that responsibility. Um, but then again, you know, like, every show is different. Not everybody uses the same strategies, you know. Like, if you want to really understand how the business works, you got to look at how different businesses operate. Um, and you can only tell so much from the outside, but once you're in, you can really see like, oh, this haunt really focuses on this more than my haunt that focuses on this, you know. Um, you know, you start to learn, you know, you can see like different management structures and how things are how things are organized. Um, and, you know, it, it just expands your mind in being able to bring good ideas back to your home haunt, you know. Mm-hmm. We, learn from, we learn from each other. And I think, you know, I think about like with the Chicago scene, which, you know, I love to talk about we are so we people guest act all over the place so we're constantly sharing knowledge and that's what raises all of us up is that like the reason that this show is so good is because this these four people who are in management have gone and worked at six different haunts and they've learned what works at all the different places um so we grow and we learn together by by getting out of our four walls you know absolutely Mm -hmm. yeah good point yeah, not living in a bubble is a good thing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like I said, like you said, it's good that haunts are getting less protective uh, in general. I think of not mm-hmm. just their actors, but also like not wanting them to work elsewhere. I think some of that is fading, but also I think a lot of the protectionism about hey, don't spill how we do our secrets. You know, don't spill our tea. Also, is fading because honestly, we need that type of communication and sharing to grow as an industry to improve. You know, otherwise, it's just going to be one haunt that has the answer to this specific question, and it'll never travel to help others. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there's different perspectives. Just because 
haunt A does things different than haunt B doesn't mean that haunt A is right and haunt B is wrong. You know, part of the reason, um, you know, that I, I wanted to have Katie on, on with, with, with me here is, is that I know that Katie and I have some different opinions on guest acting. And so I wanted to be able to like share multiple, you know, I wanted us to be able to share multiple perspectives. It doesn't mean I'm wrong or Katie's wrong or I'm right. It, it just means we approach it in different ways. And so you can find your own, you know, you can find your own flavor that works for you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so once you've decided that you want a guest act, how do people get connected and get started with it? And how is it, how easy is it to do? Um, so for us old goats, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, James will have a similar answer to this one. Um, back in the trans world Chicago days, it was networking at that show. It was hanging out at the Ren bar and like talking to people on the show floor was kind of how you got your name out initially. And then obviously since then, like you have the St. Louis show, which has gotten bigger and more haunter friendly. You've had like Midwest haunters develop, which again, aim more at actors and haunters. Um, and then obviously now social media has become a huge force, which didn't exist back when we were starting out as far as working in shows. Mm -hmm. And it, it's interesting now there's kind of become this phenomenon of like the social media haunt actor celebrity. Like mm -hmm. you have these people with like a million followers on TikToks so of just like little 10 minute clips of them like sliding or breathing fire or just like, you know, doing little pop scares. And it's interesting to see how that's evolved. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, social media has definitely made it easier for sure. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's really about, you know, asking questions and getting to know people from other haunts in, in, in any way that you can. And, you know, um, you know, I like to kind of be a person that people are comfortable with coming to and being like, hey, I want to act at this at another haunt. Can you, can you help me out? Like, I work for Midnight Terror, so of course I want all the actors to come to Midnight Terror, but I also know that if somebody lives up, you know, way up north, I'm not going to be like, hey, you should drive down here. It's a two-hour drive when I know there's three haunts, you know, within 30 minutes of them. So, so I, you know, I'm not going to like just always try to bring people here because I want them here. I want people to, you know, have opportunities. Um, but like, you know, as you connect with other people from haunts, they're going to help you to, they're going to put you in touch with the right person. Um, you know, talk to your owner, talk to your, talk to your an actor manager, like say, Hey, we're not open on this night. And I know that haunt B is open. You know, can you hook me up? Can you connect me? Most of the haunts if the, or the people who are in management in haunts are going to be connected to the other haunts in the area. Mm -hmm. And if they're not willing to let you do that, or they're not willing to connect you, that means something. And like, that's, that's, that's information that you should, you should put in your pocket and decide like, Hmm, why is it that they won't let me do this? You know, red flag. Um, yeah. It's red flag. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's, again, it's that, uh, if, if you love something, set it free, you know, and if it comes back again, you know, uh, it was meant to be, or however that goes, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, like I, I, I trust that I trust that the actors are going to come back. And if they don't like, I'm going to talk to him after and be like, what, you know, just, just curious what happened. I, if you're happier here, go be happier here. Right. Um, you know, I, I always, and who did I say? I said this, I said this in one of our classes, off season is open season. Like mm -hmm. I don't yeah. own my actors in the off season. If they want to go somewhere else in the off season, go ahead, but please don't leave my show in the middle of October. That sucks. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, but we don't have people on exclusive contracts. We don't have like, okay, we've got you for the next five years. So go check out other stuff, you know? Um, and, and I, I encourage it. I encourage people to see that. So I agree. And oh, I was going to kind of do a little thing on his point. Um, as far as like communications concerned, if you are trying to guest act during season, let your main haunt know so that they're not left high and dry like that yes. Saturday before Halloween and 10 yes. of their actors decide we're going to go guest act on the busiest night of the year. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and we, as, as I, a guy. Go ahead. Go ahead, Crystal. Go, go ahead. 
<laughs> okay. As a guest actor, um, especially if you have a large social media following, is that something that helps you with haunts saying, hey, look, I can advertise that I'm going to be here. And every time I've done this in the past, X amount of people of my followers have showed up kind of thing. Can you help advertise the haunt that you're going to be at? Yeah. I mean, I personally haven't ever seen the benefit in that, you know, like mm -hmm. I, I don't think that, that, you know, TikTok, TikTok followers really translates to, to ticket sales mm -hmm. um, or at least in very few cases. Um, the other thing with like, you know, Instagram famous or, you know, TikTok famous, like what's more important to me <laughs> is a reference, yeah. a good reference. If I can call the people that somebody's worked for and, and they say, man, this guy or gal was amazing. They, they, they were an incredible performer. They were super professional. When I can hear that, that's what I'm looking for. But like, I've seen just so many social media stars that I'm, I'm like, oh man, they've got a great look and everything. And then I go and I see them, I'm like, Ooh, that's it. Huh? All right. All right. All right. Now we know. Um, so a good look doesn't mean a good performer. Um, so, and, 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 and that's what TikTok and social and, and Instagram is all about is a good look. Um, anybody can put together five seconds of content, um, you know, but that's not the same. Well, I shouldn't say anybody can. It is an art in itself. It is an art in itself. It doesn't translate to being a good haunt actor, though. Right, because okay. they might have spent four hours doing that makeup look and practiced doing that video for the next two hours. Mm -hmm. So that's six hours of effort, and then you throw them in a queue line where you don't have that instant redo or things like that, and it's a completely <laughs> different environment for them. Um, like when I've trained makeup artists and done um, makeup artist auditions kind of similar, you see these amazing makeup artists on Instagram posting these beautiful haunt looks. And then you bring them into a haunt and you tell them you've got 10 minutes to do a look. <laughs> and they panic because they spend two to three hours making that masterpiece. Right. Yeah. And, that, and that's like, so like all these things that we're, we're talking about here, you know, the original question is like, how do you get connected to other haunts? That stuff is going to carry you, right? It, it is going to carry you. But again, like, I'm going to call your references. I am, like, if I don't know who you are, like, I'm not going to automatically be like, oh, well, it's so-and-so from Instagram. I have to put them in the queue line. Like, <laughs> no, hey, guy from Instagram, uh, I got a hole in the house. I need you in that house. Yep. Please go get in there. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, uh, unless I know that your skill is specifically in another area, uh, that that's yeah. kind of where it's going to go. And, and I, you, I'm the same way. I always ask for reference because, mm -hmm. unfortunately, there are some bad apples in this industry, too. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there are um, ulterior motives for why someone is haunt hopping. Not mm -hmm. necessarily because they're guest acting and want to see other shows, but because they constantly burn bridges and therefore mm -hmm. don't have shows to go back to. Yeah. So I always like checking that out. And then same, like, I've had a group of guest actors that they were like a troop that came out to Akron. I, I put them all in rooms. Like, I had people vouch for them, but they weren't, like, Q-line level of phenomenal. Like, the looks they brought were okay, and their acting skills were okay, so I put them in rooms. I'm not going to just put them out front just because they're a traveling actor. Yeah. Yeah. And I think going back to kind of that word of mouth, like I know that I'm a, per again, I'm a person that people will, will, will call to get connected with jobs. When I call the owner or the actor manager for this person, I'm very upfront of like, Hey, like I've seen them perform once or twice. They were pretty good or, you know, Hey, they were amazing. Here's what they're really good at. And then if I usually follow up, like honest to God, like if I refer somebody, I'll mm -hmm. follow up with the, with that person that I referred, referred them to after the show and be like, Hey, how did they do? Cause it's important to me that if I'm putting my name out there, I'm helping to get people references that I'm only giving good references. So, um, so that's, I mean, that's kind of how I follow through on stuff too with that. Okay. Um, so, yeah, this leads in kind of neatly into the next question, uh, which is, all right, 
what should you bring with you when you guest act and to pair it up what do you what should you expect to do while you're there i think those two things go hand in hand so Mm -hmm. so do you mind if i uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna feel the 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 kind of entry level katie if you want to jump into more of the the high level stuff yeah absolutely so if you're just guest acting, you're, you don't have a ton of experience in the, in the business, you just are, are growing, you want to learn, you want to experience other places, show up to that haunt, that haunt, ideally with a costume if you have one, but don't expect that you're going to wear it that night, but bring it with you. Yeah. If you do makeup, if you do, if you have a whole character and a look, bring all that stuff with you, but don't expect that you're necessarily going to get that. Make sure you've got your water and your Gatorade and whatever, you know, whatever you do to take care of yourself during the show, treat it just like if you were going to your haunt, but expect that they have less. So, you know, any, the, you know, Midnight Terror, we've always got water on hand for the, the, the staff. We've always got, you know, aspirin and stuff. I'm, I'm old, so I always take aspirin before the show because um, I know by the end of the night, if I don't, I'm going to die. Um, so, like, be prepared to do that. Um, but also understand that, like, you're there to do what they need you to do. I have straight, I've, I've picked up a broom. I've walked into haunted houses before and, you know, something had spilled on the floor and I was like, well, give me a broom, I'll sweep it. You know, um, be ready to just be, uh, you know, be an, a, a beneficial part of their show. Um, but like, don't expect that because you showed up from another haunt that they're going to be like, you get to be in the queue line, which I, for whatever reason is, you know, the, the highest, uh, the highest level of haunting, which I believe I've, I believe I've expressed here before that I disagree with the best actors can do anything. You can take them and put them anywhere. If you can only do Q line because you're, because your fragile ego can't handle going in a boo box, you're not as good as the people that'll get in, get in there and do whatever you, we need you to do. Sorry. Stop. So I just that's up yeah. the cat across the nose. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I, my, the cat snuck in, and I was scratching my foot, and I apparently bought the cat across the nose. No, on that. <laughs> <laughs> no cats were, were were hurt during the filming of this podcast. No, just, just <laughs> ego, cat egos were bruised, though. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's more of like that. But if that's more again, if you're entry level or you're just going again, a lot of times when I freelance, I'm going just because I want. I just want to have fun. So like, I don't want any responsibilities. Now going on to the higher kind of pro level of guest acting, Katie. (laughs) So when I guest act, I usually talk with the managers and owners before and get an idea of if it's a haunt, I'm not super familiar with kind of what are the themes, what are kind of the characters, what's the eras that they go for. And if they have a specific character of mine that they want me to bring. And I do have some haunts specifically want a specific character. And so that's what I'll bring. Others will give me some range of just, like, do something kind of Victorian and creepy. So I'll bring, like, three or four looks and then kind of show them to the owner of, like, what do you have a preference for? Because at the end of the day, I was brought in to add to their show. So I am there to do what they would like. Um, I always feel as a guest actor, you should have your own costuming, your own props, your own makeup, and you should be able to do your own makeup yourself. Um... I have encountered some other traveling actors that, and this is not a jab at Tater because Tater tries really hard. He just can't do his own makeup. But there are other (laughs) actors I have met who they are traveling actors and they are little divas about, well, the makeup artist has to do this, this, and this for me. And I'm like, if you're that picky, you should be doing your own makeup. Mm -hmm. Like, don't harass all these different haunts makeup artists. Like, if you have a very specific look you are going for, do it yourself. Um... But same as like what you said, I always bring a water bottle, I always bring snacks. I go with ibuprofen for my <laughs> broken ass back. Uh, <laughs> um, so those are kind of the basics of everything I bring. Um, and then I'm just, I try to be... In- Not only that, but basically you're saying that you've done a shit, sh- shit job as a manager if right. nobody else is ready. Right. Oh, it was, it was, it was awful like and it was the most miserable I've been I stuck through both nights even though I was miserable because again I was just like I made a promise I agreed you know nowadays I would have absolutely ducked out and just been like you know what deuces but at the time I didn't quite have the balls to do that and 
Yeah, worst we're definitely- experience of my life. Like as I was leaving Sunday, I called Ken Sprigs of Dream Reapers and I was just like, Dream Reapers is open tonight, right? And he's like, yeah, I'm like, I need a place to play because I just had the worst acting experience of my night. Can I come back to Dream Reapers for a night? And he was like, absolutely. And I just let all of my frustrations out in that haunt. <laughs> yeah. It was a good place for that. Yeah, was. Were, <laughs> yeah, that is the most professional reaction to being treated like that that I can imagine. Like you're even at a younger age. It's only a professional response. <laughs> yeah, that 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 was a rough one. And then the next year at Transworld, like I try, you know, I don't post things on social media. If people ask me things, I will happily respond and give them the truth about how a circumstance went. Mm -hmm. Um, He, the owner, ended up coming up to me and saying, you were, I heard you were saying naughty things about you. I should bend you over my knee and spank you in the middle of this aisle. Oh. Not making your case any stronger, dude. No. (laughs) No. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. I you, blah, blah. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. So that is hands down by far my worst guest acting experience. I don't think anything else will ever touch that. So, James, I'm going to, I'm going to jump in because this, this ties in directly yeah. to another question yeah. about what specific concerns do women need to look for when they're guest acting. And we just learned one. <laughs> well, so so women in general, we know about the misogyny and oh, the yeah. bullshit. Okay. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> but are there any specific tips to find out that that's going to be an issue before you get there? Well, apparently, when they can't for your Dave. hotel, <laughs> well, I, you know that's that's for you, Katie. Like I wouldn't, okay. I wouldn't have that exp- You know, I wouldn't yeah. know that experience certainly like you would. You know. Um. So a lot now, I I go with a lot of word of mouth, and mm-hmm. after that acting experience, I kind of had a rule for years that I was only going to guest act at haunts that either I knew a bunch of actors there or I knew the owner directly just because that was like the first case where I only met the owner at a trade show. I'd never seen the show before. I knew like one actor and that was it. And so I was just like, I'm not allowing myself to go into that circumstance again. So I stuck to shows I was familiar with and knew. Like I went out to like John LaFlamboy's haunts and Brett Hayes and, you know, people I was friends with that I knew really well. I knew a bunch of their staff and I knew there wouldn't be like a whole creeper issue. Yeah. Um, since then, I have gotten comfortable, again, working with haunts that I'm not super familiar with, but I will try to, like, do vetting on my side. Like, I I will read through reviews. I'm not looking for the customer reviews. I'm looking for the scorned actor reviews because there's always a nugget of truth in there amongst the anger. Like, yes, you're going to have the normal ones, like, we were promised pay and didn't get it, or I was promised to get to do this scene and blah, blah, blah. I'm looking for the ones that actually say, like, I was creeped out or I was touched or, you know, things like that. Um, Because unfortunately there are bad apples in this industry. Um, I, when I was a teenager, I dealt with that. I kind of made some posts on social media and made a big fuss and ended up teaching uh, sexual harassment courses at haunts last year because of that. Um, And so I do think it's important that we out the bad apples. I think there's kind of a history in haunts, kind of like the Catholic church of we just kind of (laughs) shuffle them around or don't let them be out front and it's fine. They'll be okay. They'll stop being naughty. And I don't really think that's ever the case. No, no, no. Um, That just breeds a safe place for them to exist. Correct. And I do think, especially as a female, if you are starting out and not super comfortable Guest act in pairs. I did that for years. I mean, there's a reason Tater's like my surrogate brother is the amount of shows Mm -hmm. that the two of us would go to together and work at together because just by having a guy there with me, I knew, you know, someone would have to have pretty big balls to be obnoxious (laughs) in front of him too, you know, like versus just little old me. Yeah. Um, okay. Japes, real fast, your best uh, slash worst, whatever memorable whichever. story. Whichever. You, you choose. Whichever story. Yeah, I mean, I don't, honestly, it's so funny because usually when I'm doing guest acting, it's it's all pretty general. Like, I kind of go there and do my thing and then walk out. Um, so, like, I guess my, one of my most, like, one of my best memories, though, was um, 
was uh, you know going to Statesville and and getting to do pit and just watching John Laflamboy <laughs> do pit and and like from, again I'm looking at it from a management standpoint in three sentences he managed to basically give direct um like in he, he was able to give like three um what am I trying to say like positive things that applied to every single person in that room and it was I mean it was masterful it was absolutely masterful to just see how he was able to compliment everybody and make everybody feel welcome and feel um you know that the actors who had worked the night before knew that they had done a good job and the guests who had shown up were going to be amazing and like everybody you know everybody in pit all like I think it was just me and Andy uh Martin Jello um that night uh you know everybody like turns around and like starts patting us on the back and like this is at the beginning of the night like they're all like embracing us bringing us in and we're like well i'm gonna work really hard for this dude (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. um and and you know and again from 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 you know from from a management standpoint and and like i remember having worked there years before um you know just the, the environment that, that was created that made me absolutely go and kill myself. Like my legs were destroyed at the end of that night. Um, and I, and I loved it. And and it was interesting to kind of revisit that again, years before I had been there, but I wasn't picking up on like what he was, what they were doing to motivate us. Mm-hmm. I just knew that I was motivated and I killed it that night. I was awesome. But then years later to go back and see like, Oh, that's how he did it. That's how they were doing it. That's that's how they got us to really work hard. So yeah. Um, so I think it was kind of you know a great learning opportunity, a really great learning experience for me. Cool. And All right. that would probably be also the location of my best memory. Honestly, I got to do. Yeah. I've done Statesville several times, but I got to do the final night ever this mm-hmm. past yeah. November, and seeing that final pit with just. John and all these actors, like actors had come back, flown back from across the country to say their, you know, pay their final respects to this haunt. And it was just so emotional and amazing to see. And just, he touched everyone's emotions. He got everyone both excited and a little tearful. It was just such a powerful night. And yeah, I totally left with my legs completely bruised and beat up and <laughs> eating ibuprofen like candy because I was absolutely going to give that show 200% that night. <laughs> right. That's beautiful. So we, we're we running a little bit short on time. Do mm-hmm. we have one last question? Yeah, we have one last question from the audience. This is actually from Alex. Okay. Um, so as an owner manager, is there value in seeking traveling actors and what should a manager look for? Yeah. I mean, again, from, if you're looking at, you know, just when you're looking at that entry level folks, the people who are just looking for experience, Mm -hmm. like what you know automatically is that if this person is coming from haunt a and they want to visit your haunt, then they're thirsty. They want to know, they want to grow. And so they're going to be harder workers um, than than just the average schmo. So, okay. so, so I think in that in that respect, like the kids who get out there and want to just experience haunting in, in, in as many ways as possible, they automatically bring value because they're not just there because eh, I guess I'm going to work at a haunted house. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, they're seeking it out now. They're, they're, lear- they're looking to learn and they're looking to grow. So I think just from the, the baseline entry level right there, there's a value. Mm-hmm. Um, Katie, you can talk about, you know, the expert level, I think. I mean, to me, from the expert level is like the haunt gets the benefit of even if I'm only brought in to act mm-hmm. before the show, like usually my area tends to be kind of with the managers like, uh, I laughed at Statesville. I stole John LaFlamboy's office half the time when I guest act there. But mm-hmm. you end up just sharing stories or explaining how you do stuff. So no matter what, even if they're not paying you for your knowledge, you end up telling them. Same with then at the end of the night, like after wrap-up, after the show's closed, everyone's just sitting around drinking a beer or whatever. You end up just discussing stories or what you've seen or what you've done or different how you like how they do this. And, like, in your experience, you've seen things do this. So you end up trading knowledge and like different skills and stuff without even that being officially like your duty. It's just that sharing of knowledge that happens that often 
I think um, Alan has commented, like you get that one golden nugget and it's totally worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, if you've enjoyed this conversation <laughs> and I bet you have, uh -huh. um, they'll be having more conversations on this topic coming up. Am I right? Yep. Um, Midwest Haunters Convention in Rosemont, Illinois, June 10th through the 12th. The pre-bus tour is on the 10th. Uh, so, yeah, the pre-convention the pre -convention bus tour is on the 10th. Uh, so they'll be doing a panel on this exact subject of guest of, of guest acting. So, honestly, and, and apparently I'm supposed to bring the steel cage <laughs> if I come. <laughs> Just you know, yeah. have, have a space. <laughs> I don't think we. I don't. I don't think we disagreed as much as I would have liked. To be honest. Oh. No. Well, yeah. well, you know, <laughs> you two have. Okay, look. This was the preview. You two get you know another twenty days or so to work on your promos and come in hot and heavy for the cage match at MHC. <laughs> that's no, I like it. I there like we it. go. That, that's yeah. the plan now. Well, yeah, Jake, no, it's, it, MHC is going to be a lot of fun. We're we're doing the line the line. It's going to be line actor panel where we're actually going yeah. to be doing line acting and yes. explaining to the audience what what we're doing, like what the the, the point of our techniques are. So that'll be a lot of fun. So what yeah. makes a good line actor? Yep. And yeah, it's an interesting easy. mix because, like, obviously, like myself and Japes have acted together. Mm -hmm. uh, Tater's there. Uh, we've worked with Tater, like. Andy's there, but there's a couple other people on that list who are Chicago based. And so I've never worked with them. So I'm kind of curious how that's going to play out. Yeah. Just because, hmm. Sorry. I was going to say, I, I, can I, can I make a special announcement too? Sure. Go for it. This is the first time it's been heard and officially confirmed, but Jeff Fluffy Walker is also going to be joining the Yay. spooky Avengers. So, so yes, I was going to harass him that we need him in the Spooky Avengers. Yeah, he, he messaged me and he is going to be available. So we're adding one more amazing line actor to that. that it that feels panel. like getting this many line actors in one room is illegal somehow. I just haven't <laughs> figured out which law it's breaking. <laughs> it's uh, going to be silly. Probably a blood alcohol level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Combined blood alcohol of dead. <laughs> Uh, but no, this is going to be great. I'm looking forward to that. And honestly, thank you both for coming on. It's been wonderful. Um, once again, I take a one moment, uh, let nice people know where they can find you, and we'll close down. Yep. Uh, you can find me on, on the Facebook. That's probably your best bet, Lost Soul Chicago. Uh, you can also email me at lostsoulchicago lost at gmail.com. Um, that's probably your best bet. And Japes Palace on Facebook. I believe I'm one of two Japeses on Facebook. So you got a 50-50 chance of finding me. <laughs> that works for me. Kate? And I'm Katie Lane on Facebook. Um, pretty much anything on social media, you can find me via the name, the username Banshiette, B-A-N-S-H-E-E-T-T-E. -E -T -T -E. And my email is Banshiette at gmail.com. On that note, everyone, thank you both, Japes and Katie, for a wonderful and very informative time. I feel like I actually learned a lot. Yeah. I, I This has <laughs> actually changed the way I think about guest acting in a pretty significant way. So I think this is really cool. Yes. Um, yes. We're educating them. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is not a subject I knew anything about. I admitted that. But I had my own preconceived notions. But some of those got blown up. But you and all I, have guest acted, though. You've got your yeah, homework, yeah. but then you've gone sure and guest have. acted I mean, in a bunch of different haven't. places. So you have experience doing this. You just didn't label it as such. Yeah, and I think that's exactly it. I never actually thought of it that way until, well, about 50 minutes ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so thank you very much. Uh, this has been episode 338 of Haunt Weekly, sitting down with Japes Palace and Katie Lane to learn all about traveling uh, traveling acting. Uh, you can find more Haunt Weekly at hauntweekly.com, the new website <laughs> that is there. Haunt Weekly on Facebook, Haunt Weekly on Twitter, YouTube.com slash Haunt Weekly is the YouTube channel. Every episode is up and available there. It's a wonderful place to get caught up. And, of course, you can also find us wherever you get your podcasts, whatever app. I, we're, we're there. So until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And we will see you all next week. <laughs>